Hello, and we are live. Um, my name is Steve Hung. Um, thank you for um, joining me this um, Saturday um, afternoon. I'm going to um, give a little short intro les lesson on how to finger pick the blues. And then so it's um, really easier than you think, okay? Um, this is all you have to do um, if you want to learn how to finger pick the blues, to play, play the blues, okay? First of all, you get a... Um, a bottle of your favorite um, hard liquor. Now, um, I have a bullet bourbon right here, but um, you know, you can get um, Jack Daniels or tequila, any type of um, favorite hard liquor that you'd like. And then you get a shot glass. Um, I have a don't mess with Texas shot glass. Uh, bonus points if you have a Texas shot glass, that'll make your blues playing um, sound even better. And then you pour yourself a shot and then you down a shot while you think about that past lover you had. Um, that left you or like maybe um, you used to be rich and then um, you're poor now. And then so um, that's how you play the blues. And um, that's it, that's, uh, uh, that's really it. That's the um, end of the lesson. Um, okay, I'll log off now. Okay, I was just kidding, yeah. Um, ha ha ha, I was just trying to um, uh, throw in a corny joke there. Okay, um, I'll talk a little bit about myself, um, how I got um, involved um, with the blues and um, how I learned how to play blues guitar. So um, it was late last, um, um, a few weeks ago, it was late in the night and I walked down to the crossroads and I decided to strike up a deal with the devil. And okay, um, uh, that was another corny joke I was trying to um, uh, put in. So um, the, um, I grew up in Texas and um, as a teenager, I um, actually started off in um, playing electric guitar and I was into like blues rock music such as um, Led Zeppelin and um, Eric Clapton and that sort of stuff. So I started off with the blues rock playing electric guitar as a teenager. Then I got into um, Steve Ray Vaughan, ZZ Top and Johnny Winter because, you know, I lived in Texas. And so I um, listened to that music um, all the time. And then I got into the electric uh, um, blues guitar players like B.B. King, Albert King, Freddie King, um, Buddy Guy, um, like um, all the Kings. Um, uh, I was really um, into them. And then I studied their licks and then I would go down to the um, blues um, jam session and um, play um, some electric um, um, guitar um, blues licks. And then um, I did that for a while, but um, I was um, for a while in college, I was playing um, lead guitar in various uh, rock bands and I was playing lead guitar in a reggae band. And then uh, one day uh, my band broke up and then so I was, I didn't have a band around, but I had an acoustic guitar. Um, my roommate's acoustic guitar was lying around. And then so I picked up the guitar and then I decided to go to um, uh, acoustic um, open mic since um, I wasn't in a band anymore. And that's how I um, sort of transitioned to, into, um, into a more um, acoustic finger style blues and um, folk music. And um, at the time, um, you know, at that time in college, I didn't really listen to much acoustic blues. Um, you know, I just sort of um, took a lot of the licks that I already knew on electric guitar and kind of transposed it for um, the acoustic guitar. Of course, later I would um, get introduced to the music of um, acoustic um, uh, blues artists like Robert Johnson and Blind Lemon Jefferson and, um, you know, John Lee Hooker and then Lightning Hopkins. I would, um, get introduced to her music later, but um, during that time in college when I was transitioning, it wasn't that I grew up listening to acoustic blues music. So I figured out acoustic blues by taking those Buddy Guy, those Stevie Ray um, licks and um, reverse engineering it and fitting it to acoustic guitar. And then I said reverse engineering because all those great um, electric um, blues guitar players like B.B. King and um, Buddy Guy, they actually started off um, um, on acoustic guitar or listening to acoustic guitar music. And then later when um, electricity um, um, was widespread in America and they moved to the big city and then they um, got electric guitar, then that's when they pioneered um, electric blues guitar. But those cats like Buddy Guy and B.B. King, they actually started off on acoustic guitar. And then so that's why I say reverse engineering, because I started off listening to blues rock, rock music, um, you know, Stevie Ray, um, Buddy Guy. But then um, um, when I, my band broke up, I reverse engineered the licks and then um, transposed it to acoustic guitar. So that's going to be sort of my strategy for um, the lesson today. Um, um, you know, like I don't expect you to like 
uh, own like all the Skip James um, records and stuff. But if you, um, you know, if you listen to most people are exposed to electric blues um, guitar, like Eric Clapton or whatever. So if you listen to that, you know, that's fine. You don't have to be a Robert Johnson expert. You can take whatever you know for electric guitar and transpose it for the acoustic guitar. So that's going to be um, start my lesson strategy today. All right. So um, I'll um, demonstrate some stuff on um, the guitar. I'll, I'll finally stop st um, talking and I'll play on the guitar. But if you play any sort of blues guitar, the, um, even on electric guitar, the first thing you probably learned, learned was... <laughs> course I'm, I'm playing with a pick right here and you have to imagine like you know I'm with the electric guitar and then now those are so, um, sort of in the power chord position like the first and the fifth and by the way let me know how it sounds um out there I'm, I'm just using a laptop mic so let me um, know how it um, sounds there um, um, out there um, on the internet land if I need to play louder or speak louder just let me know it sounds fine like in my basement right here so that's this and then I'm playing with a pick now. We'll transition to finger picking later. And then, um, so that's for electric guitar, but then um, when you pick up an acoustic guitar, um, you know, you can play that same shuffle. Why I just played is called a shuffle. But um, you play it in sort of like the first position, folk chord um, positions. You know, I hope everyone here knows E major, A major, or like a G or B7. And so like... So that's pretty much like the basic blues um, shuffle, like um, using the pick and using like first position chords. And then um, I hope I'm not losing everyone. Like uh, this is just like, you know, like, um, yeah, the basic shuffle. Now um, it's time to drop the pick. Yeah, I dropped my pick. And we're now going to transition to more of the rural country style um, finger picking um, pattern. So um, let me get a sip of water. So I'm going to lower my camera here so you can see both my left and my right hand. So I'm going to take this um, shuffle that you already know that you normally strum. But um, when you strum the chord, you're playing every note simultaneously, right? I'm playing every note simultaneously, every note simultaneously, every note at the same time. That's what happens when you strum. But when you finger pick it, you actually... Um, break it up like the left hand is the same it's the same as me as going but instead of just pl playing all the notes at the same time when I finger pick I break it up so I have bass here and then I can use uh, three fingers here on these strings and then play um, these uh, notes simultaneously on the E chord. And then I'm going to do an arpeggio. That's the term, uh, it's called arpeggio. It's when you just um, pluck the individual um, notes of a chord rather than just go. But pluck, pluck. So I have bass note. So I, you can take something that you already know, like. But instead of uh, strumming a chord and playing all the notes simultaneously, which is what you're doing when you're strumming a chord, you're breaking down the notes um, individually. You don't have to play all the notes at the same time, so. I actually forgot to um, introduce something first. So before, um, sorry, my bad. Before we um, go any further, um, we have to establish a good um, bass note. So normally when you're playing electric guitar, um, blues guitar, you're playing with the whole band. You have a drummer supporting you, and then you have a bass player, and then 
that kind of frees you up to sort of like wail on electric guitar and stuff. But since I'm um, going finger style, um, you don't have a drummer. Uh, if you're playing solo, um, you don't have a drummer or bass player um, like backing you up. So um, you have to play, you have to be a band in a box when you play um, sort of finger style blues. You have to play like the rhythm, the accompaniment, the, the lead and the bass um, um, all at the same time when you do the solo finger picking blues stuff. So I'll demonstrate the bass. When you play um, finger style blues, your um, thumb is pretty much your bass player. So you can talk to your bandmate. Um, Hi, bass player. Hey, what's up? Um, I don't know, not much. Let's play some blues bass player. Okay, so I'll lower the camera. And then so we'll go through a 12 um, bar pattern. So I'm on the first chord E. I'm on the four chord, the A. Back to E. B, A, E. So just practice this when you're on your own. Throw some chords in. Yeah, so you get the idea. That's um, like um, so. Um, usually, when you're playing um, finger style, like um, you have to keep a steady bass um, with your thumb. Like um, think of it like the thumb as a bass guitar. Now I'm going to go back towards that um, pattern I was playing before the shuffle. How I broke it down. And so forth. So, um, yeah, that's um, one of the patterns. And then, if um, you have any questions, just um, let me know. I'll give like um, ten or twenty seconds um, to see if like anyone wants to type in a question because um, it's really hard. I can't see your your faces. Um, I can't see your facial expressions. I'm not getting any like feedback. So I'll pause for like ten seconds to see if like like um, maybe I'm like rushing it, going too fast, or um, or like for all, all good I can like show like different patterns but like um, the whole point is it can take something that you already know like like from strumming and then like instead of strumming it just break it down to um, you know like arpeggiating and like individual notes and stuff so all right so um I'll move along if um anyone doesn't have any um questions but um so that um same shuffle that it did like um those that's the melody that why just sung is is a melody it's a basic blue shuffle but you don't really have to go in that order like da 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 it went Ascending and descending, but you can um, you know change the order. You don't have to go um, like down, up, up, down, down. You can start off at the really top note and then just go down and then up. So instead of oh, I'll move the camera down. Instead of doing that, you can just go da 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 da. Start at the top note, go down. And then uh, go back up. It's the same notes as while the chef I was playing before. I'm just changing the order. So instead of ascending and then descending, I'm descending and then ascending. So, so this is what it sounds like.
Yeah, so um, this is actually something that's um, really a trademark and um, Lightning Hopkins I'm playing. If you listen to um, a lot of Lightning Hopkins, he just, um, he does this a lot, this sort of stuff like... Mm -hmm. And if you notice, it's the same notes as... It's the exact same notes as that. I'm just changing the order. So instead of... I'm doing this. Just a oscillating between two notes, so... Yeah, and so forth. So um, that's uh, something can do, um, you know, exact same notes as um, what I was um, playing in the last example, uh, but you can just switch up the order to like get a different feel. So the first one was sort of like a standard blue shuffle feel that everyone knows. Da, 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 da. The second one is sort of, you can get like a lightning Hopkins kind of like bouncy, like, um, like, um, like feel out of it. Okay. Um, I'll introduce an, another um, concept um, for you. So um, another thing can do is um, something that I um, like sort of like um, accidentally bumped into while um, noodling on a guitar on um, this past week is you can um, sounds pretty cool if you transition from minor chords to um, major chords. So um, this is um, hope everyone knows this is the E minor chord right here. <laughs> And this is the E major chord right here. So you can, um, and the same thing like with, with A can transition from A minor. This is A minor right here to A major. And then from B minor. So um, uh, it'll make more sense now. So from E minor to A, E major, this is what sounds. So, um, you know, if you look at my left hand, you can play E minor chord just um, with two fingers holding down two notes. And then where the, the note that you put down to make it, make it major, like this is E minor. Now um, I take my index finger, put it, put it down on this uh, fret right here and make it to E major. You can hammer on to that. I, this is a hammer on. I pluck once, hammer on. E minor to E major, E minor, E major, E minor, E, e major, E minor, E major. Here it's uh, A minor. Um, a minor chord right here, I use my pinky my pinky finger to um, hammer on on this note, so it's uh, A major now. A minor, A major. A minor, A major, A minor, A minor, A major. Same thing with B, um, B minor. To B major. And of course I'm keeping that steady um, um, bass thumping. Five, six, seven, eight.
right. So, um, are any uh, questions about that? Um, we're going on um, pretty fast. So, um, so um, earlier um, I introduced like sort of this, those three notes right here, which you can also play. Um, you know, that changes up the order. So that's sort of the, the melody line that you're carrying on. You, you don't have, uh, have to use that melody line. You don't have to use those um, notes. There's um, all sorts of different um, melodies um, you can use. So um, here's another one. show the melody I'm using it's I'm just using my pinky finger to um, carry the melody for this pattern so and then with the chords This um sort so it's these three notes instead of like it's and then um where I got this um idea this is um these three notes are really prevalent in um, blues music um there's a Gary Clark Jr. um track um that he um did um like um, while I was in the college it was a slide song by Gary Clark Clark Jr. it's called Like a Hound Dog. And it was um, on a, his album that he did um, on an indie label back before he became famous. He wrote a song called Like a Hound Dog, which is a tribute to um, Hound Dog Taylor. But um, the intro to that slide song goes. Wait. Yeah, so that's sort of the intro to um, Like a Hound Dog by Gary Clark Jr. It uses those same notes. And then um, where this also appears is um, in Steve Ray Vaughan. He has a, a instrumental fast, um, instrumental called Rude Mood. But um, there's a lick, a similar lick in there that goes. that song in a while that was um, Rude Mood by Stevie Ray Some, something like that well I haven't yeah you know, I get the point it's um all, it's all, all those um same notes um you know you hear it in different blues songs so um of course I kind of simplified it I'm only going let me lower the camera so bass and then pluck three fingers. notice um i went up to for the a chord i went up to more the bar chord position and same with the b chord um, i could play the a um uh, portion right here but this cut, sort of stretch right here it's stretching between one two three three frets it might be too difficult for some people so i can certainly play it this way It could be easier playing it from the bar chord position. Of course, if this if uh, bar chords are too difficult for you, um, you know, if you're only used to first position chords and this stretches too much and you can't 
do the bar chord, you can um, like put a simple pattern here. So. Back to E. So I'll start over. And then I can substitute the A with something easier. Yeah. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. So um, everything I've been doing so far, it's just with um, kind of like a monotone bass line, just like thumping the same thing over and over and over again. But in um, country music or Irish music or like some styles of of acoustic blues music, like especially the Piedmont blues, um, like um, or, or ragtime music, um, the bass they actually alternate be between the first and the fifth. You hear it a lot in country music. Like usually, there's an upright bass player. Like in, if you listen to old school country, there's an upright bassist who who like thumps between the root and the fifth. I hear my train a coming, so rolling round the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. And yeah, so root and fifth. So if this isn't um, too easy, if what I showed you is too easy, you can implement um, uh, alternating a baseline between root and fifth to um, to um, like give it more of a ragtime feel. And that's this is actually closer to the Piedmont style. Um, if I play the this pattern that I just played with um, first and fifth. So that alternating bass line, it makes it sound more like Piedmont-ish, like more like ragtime, which is sort of like the style of, you know, Archie Edwards, Mississippi John Hurt, um, you know, sort of that like more like like bouncy ragtime sort of Piedmont um, feel. But if the uh, if, if that's too much, if it's too complicated, you know, that's sort of a advanced technique. It's sort of tricky um, doing the first and fifth while um, plucking out chords and playing with the bit melody line all at the same time. If you're just starting into this, you're, you're a beginner, um, it might be too complicated. So there's nothing wrong with just keeping a monotone um, bass line. It still sounds good. Like a lot of blues guitar, acoustic blues guitar player like Lightning Hopkins or John Lee Hooker, they don't do like any anything like fancy. Like um, they just like, um, like stay on the same like bass note, you know, that's, that's, that's perfectly fine. It still sounds like, um, I'm fine. They like, do that in, in um, you know, Mississippi Delta blues too. Like it's like the monotone, like baseline of, of course you have the technical ability to go between root and fifth, you know, like that's cool, but it still sounds good. Just like with that same bass note. Yeah, it still sounds good with just like the same bass note like permeating throughout the whole um, uh, pattern. So um, I'll um, demonstrate one more finger picking pattern before I move on to uh, another subject. So take a 10 second break if anyone wants to type in a question. If I'm going too fast, if this is way over your head or not, you're like, no, this is too basic. Um, give me something more challenging. Um, yeah, I'll wait for 10 seconds. All right. Um, the um, here, here's the last uh, pattern um, or concept or idea that I want to show you, and then um, it's um, the the concept of um, of droning, and then you can use instead of um, plucking out chords, you can um, like um, 
utilize um, droning for your chord progression. And then this is, um, it, you'll get sort of a Lightning Hopkins sort of like feel out of it. But if you listen to like the more popular electric, like blues and blues rock, um, Jimi Hendrix utilizes this concept in Hey Joe and Stevie Ray um, uses, utilizes this concept in his song um, and Pride and Joy. It's, um, so if you um, play um, Hey Joe, it starts off like this. Those, those first two notes. He, he, he's um, taking um, this string right here, the E, A, D, G, B, the, on the B string, he, you're sliding up from the third to the fifth fret. And this here is the E note. It's the same E note as this open string E note right here. So I can play the E note down here on this fret, or I can play an open E note on the open string. But when you double it up like this, This is called droning right here, and it's it's sort of like doubling up, like thickening it up the sound. It's the same concept as when you play twelve string like guitar. You know, you're like doubling up all the notes when you play um, twelve strings. So it's the same idea. I'm playing E and E right here, E right here, E E right here. They're all at the same time, and it's a sort sort of a neat little effect. And Stevie Ray uses this um, in the intro to Pride and Joy. Two E's right here, E here. Yes, uh, I know I messed up, but it's been a while since I played that song. So, um, if you, um, Take the first two phrases of Stevie Ray's uh, Pride and Joy. If you slow it down, um, you can get something like this. Well, um, those notes right here, I'm just, um, it's just a basic E pentatonic scale, but I'm descending, so. It's the same thing as in Hey Joe. So, um, you can slow it down. Yeah, so I sort of came up with a blues pattern based on um, a, a droning sequence. This is the um, same um, um, sequence used in the intro to Stevie Ray's Pride and Joy and to the intro of Hey Joe by um, Jimi Hendrix. But if you um, slow it down and change it um, a little bit, um, you get, uh, you know, like something that sounds like sort of like in the style of Lightning Hopkins. So um, sort of that like really dirty blues sound. So um i stop for questions and then let me see what else I'm supposed to teach on the itinerary list. So it went over breaking down chords into finger picking patterns, thumping single note bass lines. And okay, next weaving bass lines in with chords. 
So I don't see any questions, so I'll move on. Okay, um, everything I taught up to this point, it was based sort of like, besides that last example, it was sort of based on like a chordal um, approach, like playing chords. That's the chord. I'm playing chords here, I'm just breaking it up into individual notes. That's a chord right here. Everything here is like chord based. If you look at my left hand, I'm just, it's just a regular O, E note. But I'm doing different things with the right hand right here. Like I'm going do, 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 or do, 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 or do, 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 It's all chord based playing. So um, another thing besides using chords um, in the chord progression, you can also integrate weaving bass lines. As a, uh, um, if you're a guitar player, guitar playing is usually a chord um, based instrument like like I'm strumming chords here, strumming chords here. But if you um, have a friend that's a bass player, they don't really um, play chords that much on the bass. They integrate, they either uh, go back between the first and fifth. Or they like, um, bass players like to weave uh, what's called like a bass, um, a walking bass line. So that's a sort of a, a really popular bass line, a blues bass line that a lot of um, 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 bass players um, use. Uh, most of it is just based on like the pentatonic states, um, scale. Um, if you're not a bass player, or if you don't know any bass pl um, players, um, a classic example of a bass line um, used by a guitar player on the guitar is, um, again, Steve Ray's um, Pride and Joy. So if you go past the intro, you heard about love and giving sight to the blind. I made the love and called the sun to shine. Shaved my sweet little thing. I shaved my pride and joy. Shaved my sweet little baby. I'm just a little river boy. That part that Stevie Ray uses um, on the E chord. That's a bass line right here. That's a bass line that he's just playing it on the guitar. So I see Ray on the A part of this uh, song, he just does an A7. And then for the B part, he just um, plays a chord on that. So he plays a C Ray in Pride and Joy. He, he strums an A7 chord during the A um, section of the song. And then he strums a B7 chord during the B part. But during the E part, instead of going like, you heard about love and giving sight, he, he like plays a walking bass line. So um, you can, uh, sort of how Stevie Ray does it, um, you can sort of um, mix and match um, chords, um, like um, for um, finger picking the blues. And then so for example, in this example, I'm going to start off with um, the E um, part, I'm going to um, um, play a, a chord pattern, but during the A section, I'm going to weave in a basing, walking bass line instead of playing this or this, I'll like um, do something like and then for E, I'll play a chord, so Okay, it doesn't sound good, but if you listen to the um, to uh, my cover of Houston Blues by um, Alan Haynes, I do sort of the same thing. So here with the E, I'm, I'm using chord chording patterns, and when I get to the A, um, no, um, the A chord progression, I, I play, um, I weave in a bass, uh, a walking bass line.
walking bass line. Chord. Chords. Chords. Turn around. So that was a chord used in the A, a walking bass line, and the, no, a chord used in the E and B, a walking bass line, and the A. And then you can mix and match too. You can, um, for, for this next example, I'll use, oh, for the, both the E and the A uh, chord progressions, I'll start off with the walking bass line and then halfway through I'll finish it off with a chordal thing like. Uh, yeah, okay, um, I'm just making this up on the spot so you can start off with. Walking bass line, chords, walking bass line, chords, walking bass line, chords, walking bass line, chords, chords. Yeah, so um, that's how you weave um, walking bass lines in. So the whole point behind that is you don't have to go like, E chord, E chord, E chord, E chord, A chord, A chord, A chord, A chord, E chord, E chord. You can go like A chord, A chord, no, E chord, E chord, A walking bass line, A walking bass line, E chord, or you can mix and match it. You can go E walking bass line, E walking bass line, A chord, A chord, or do it both like E walking bass line, E chord, A walking bass line, A chord. There's all sorts of combinations and uh, mixing and matching um, you, you can do, um, you know, because as a acoustic blues finger picking, you're both the guitar player um, and the bass player. So you can weave those two together. So um, yeah, uh, um, that's it for weaving the bass line before I go into the next um, subject. Um, I'll pause for like 10 seconds to see if anyone wants to type in a question. Let me see what the next concept I'm supposed to teach is. So how y'all enjoying this lesson? Is this um, pretty helpful um, for y'all or over your head? Or you don't have to like um, absorb. I know it might feel like a fire hydrant. You don't have to absorb everything that I'm teaching and then like, like, um, like regurgitate it the next day. Um, I'm just throwing out concepts you can Everything I've taught so far, you can like pick and choose what concepts you like and integrate into your own um, playing and such. So, um, weaving walking bass lines into chords, adapting adapting electric blues guitar licks for finger style acoustic guitar. All right, that's the next uh, concept I'll teach. So, this is um, uh, this uh, next part I'm gonna teach. It's more geared for if you currently play electric um blues um, guitar and like playing like those wicked solos and stuff and then um you don't have to um throw what you learn um uh, in the trash when you like come like play acoustic like like it's not like like oh i'm switching from one world for another a lot if you're an electric blues guitar player if you play like bb king or buddy guy or stevie ray or, or johnny winter or whatever you don't have to throw away what you learn um, just because you're playing acoustic blues you can um a lot of the stuff that um those like hot licks on electric blues guitar you can adapt it for um acoustic guitar so i'll um do an example right now for this next example pretend this is an electric guitar so we're going to pretend that this is a fender strat or a gibson les paw and then we're going to pretend that i'm playing electric um guitar in a in a blues jam so i'm um it's a Monday night, uh, or Wednesday night blues jam at the Polish club or, or at the cat side pub. And then I've got a backing band behind me. So I'm going to play a jam track and then 
um, the solo over the jam track as if this was an electric guitar. So, yeah, let me get the jam track started. Yeah, so that's um, sort of something that I would play if um, on electric guitar, if I was at a blues jam, I would play a solo sort similar to that. Or if I was, um, you know, playing like with a, a band, like I will play something like that. Now, when I play those same licks by itself, if I don't have a backing band behind me, like the listener might get like a little lost. Like it might sound just like a bunch of like notes or like. It might not sound like music. It might sound like just a bunch of notes, like like uh, random notes, or like the the listener might get lost if you only play like those licks by itself. So I'll play those um, that solo again, but um, without the bass track. So. So if you're like playing that in a bar and then um, if you're playing like hours and hours and hours just of like those sort of licks, like it, it don't sound like music. Like it just sounds like a bunch of like, like licks or like, um, like um, licks like um, thrown out like at the listener. And then like um, the listener, like unless you have a really good ear, you can't really like, like um, hone in to like what chord progression you're playing over. It just sounds like a bunch of notes batch of licks so what you do is when you're playing um when you're playing solo acoustic guitar instead of just throwing out a lot of electric um guitar licks um, you can take those same electric guitar licks but add the bass line in so you can play the bass line and play your licks at the same time and it sounds more musical so instead of hearing a bunch of licks i'm gonna the, that solo i'm gonna play I'm gonna play the same exact guitar solo, but with the thumping, uh, with the thumb bass line um, added into it, and then I'm gonna slow it down, you know, because I'm playing acoustic to like give that like like old school like acoustic blues feel. So. So everything that I just played, it's um, pretty much the exact same solo that I was playing over the jam track. But um, if you're playing acoustic guitar by yourself, busking on a street corner or like in a coffee shop or, or um, at the Archie Edwards um, Blues Jam, or you might not have a, um, a, a band um, backing you up. So you have to, um, as a solo um, 
acoustic finger picker. You're both the bass player, the rhythm guitar player, and the lead guitar player. So you have to, um, what I just played is lead guitar and bass. The listener is hearing the bass player and the lead guitar player playing at the same time because you don't got no um, band to back you up, you know? So anyways, the whole point of that is that, like me, if you start off playing electric guitar or you start off, I don't know, listening to Eric Clapton, you can take those same electric guitar blues like and sort of um, transpose it to the acoustic guitar as long as you have that, um, that um, a thumping bass line and then it'll sound good on the acoustic guitar. So that's um, it for the section of incorporating electric guitar lines into um, blues guitar. And then I'll um, pause for a moment to see if anyone wants to type in a question. Um, everyone's kind of, um, all six of y'all are kind of quiet. So i um, assuming, um, you know, like um, it's all good. Um, we'll pause before, let's see. I already went over droning. The last part is adding double stops to solos and adding chords to solos. And then, so, okay. Next topic I'll talk about is adding double stops to solos. So usually when you think of a guitar solo, especially for, um, for, um, the electric guitar, you think of a series of single notes, like. A bunch of like single notes, um, like strung together. But it can also, um, doesn't have to, um, for acoustic guitar, it adds flavor if you introduce um, double stops. Now, what are double stops? Instead of playing single notes, you play two notes at the same time. And then um, example of that is, um, again, um, same example as before, um, Pride and Joy by Steve Ray. He uses a lot of um, double notes in the guitar solo. So I think um, in Pride and Joy, the um, guitar solo in the middle of the song, it goes something like this. So um, those first two things. Um, it's a double stop because I'm playing two notes at the same time. Of course, I'm using a big a pick right here, so I'm going to go finger style here with just these two fingers. Add the bass note in. Outro solo and Pride and Joy, there's um, two solos, I think. So the way I just played was the middle solo. Of course, I just played a portion of it. And then there's an outro solo that goes like this. So, so this part. Uh, those are double stops because I'm playing two notes simultaneously and of course I'm using a pick. I can drop the pick, just use those two fingers. I'll add the bass note in. So, um, those are some examples of double stops that um, Stevie Ray uses, but um, when um, here's another du common double stop. So um, when you play the um, E pentox scale descending, You don't always have to use single notes, so the concept here is... Did you 
hear that single note, single note, single note, single note. Single note. Double stop. It's a pretty, uh, it's a like, um, pretty common concept. Like instead of like using those single notes in the pentatonic scale, the scale you can double it up. Instead of. And use double stops. And then here's a common double stop. Hear this like a lot in like blues playing this one, this like double stop right here. Yeah, so um, that's the concept of um, double stop. And the reason why you use it in um, finger style acoustic blues a lot is. Um, if you play just a bass note and the single note lead melody, it still sounds fine, but, um, you know, um, since you're just one instrument and then you have to make your instrument sound like a whole band, you can throw in some double stops and your solo sort of like thickens up the solo. You know, like when you're cooking stew or something and if it's too watery, you throw in some cornstarch or some flour to um, sort of thicken up the texture of the stew. So it's the same thing like like with a guitar solo, like um, and a lot of like um, electric blues playing, a lot of it is just like wailing like on the like, uh, on like single notes and stuff because like it's already thick, like um, the band array has um, a rhythm guitar player, a bass guitar player, like a horn section. Um, you know, like a, a drum section. So you really have a rhythm section that's really thick. So like BB King can just like play like those like solo like like note stuff and like like bending. But um, when you're playing acoustic guitar, like it's all solo. So um, you know you don't have like that big like backing band behind you to give you that thick sound. So you have to sort of like thicken it up by like um, adding some double stops. Like so. So instead of going, I can, instead of, I can add a double stop here. Double stop. So um, that's the concept of um, using uh, double stops. Um, and a blues soloing where, you know, the finger picking pattern. And then the last uh, concept, okay. Adding chords to soloing. So double stop is when you just play um, two notes at the same time. When you play three or more notes, um, that's a chord. So to thicken up your solos um, even more, you can incorporate um, um, chords into your playing. So um, when I was playing that, guitar solo earlier, um, I used, this is a really common lick in, um, in blues guitar playing, so. electric guitar with a pick. This right here is a chord right here. This right here is a chord. This right here is a chord. I'm just playing with um, only these three strings um, on the guitar, but they derive from chords like if I'm gonna play the full full chord, you know, like this is like some sort of weird jazz chord, like a weird E jazz chord. Some sort of A variant and then a normal E chord. So that, that lick comes from this. But 
But of course, like most uh, players, um, they just play. Just on the top three strings. Of course, you can finger pick the chord, arpeggiate the chords. I'll add the bass line in now, the thumping bass line. So. Of course, the whole core part, um, point of using double stops or chords into a solo is it thickens up the guitar solo. I could, I, of course, I can just play single notes like. But of course, that sounds like sort of weak, so. Um, of just a single note, so I'm gonna use chords now, like and gravy instead of. I'm gonna play like chords. And then um, a lot of this stuff, like this, is a uh, common when you listen to a lot of like Mississippi Delta blues, like. It's pretty much if you take a D, um, a D7 chord, a D7 chord right here. Now, if you move it up to frets, you can. This is some sort of variant on the E chord, so you can use it over the E progression and go down a half step for the A part. So instead of Instead of playing the E chord in this position, you can play it up here with this D7 sort of shape, like five, six, seven, eight. So the majority of that for the E and A section, I was just using sort of this D7 shape and just like switching, like going down a half step and back up. Or you can move it up here, so E, A, So um, instead of using regular first position E and A chords, you can use sort of this D7 shape and just move it back and forth um, up and down the neck um, to get your um, E and A sound. So that's um, all I have for incorporating chords into solos. So um, um, I'll pause for about 10 or 20 seconds if um, anyone has any questions out there and then I'll wrap it up, so. All right, so I know I threw a lot of um, concepts out here. This isn't, you know, again, um, this sort of lesson, um, it's more of um, sort of like me explaining general ideas, principles, 
concepts. You're not supposed to take whatever I played and regurgitate it back um, note for note. Um, what I want you to do is use some of those concepts like breaking chords into um, uh, different, uh, uh, plucking different um, individual notes instead of strumming a chord and, and such. And then um, take those ideas and then um, use your creativity and then um, make your own thing out of it. So um, I know I um, demonstrated um, throughout a lot of concepts and ideas in the past hour, but for the final thing of what I'm going to do to um, today for this lesson is I'm going to play a song, the Houston Blues, and I think it uses almost um, all the concepts that I um, talked about today. It, it, it uses all of it in my uh, cover of Houston Blues by Alan Haim. So, um, Houston Blues is a song written by an electric blues guitarist down in Houston. Um, uh, it was originally meant for electric guitar, but again, um, I didn't grow up listening to acoustic blues music. I sort of reversed engineered it. So I did the same thing too. I um, took the um, Alan Haynes song and I sort of reversed engineered it and made an adaption of it in acoustic guitar. And then sort of my own arrangement of it. So. If you listen, I'm gonna next song I'm gonna play is the Houston Blues by Alan Haynes. I'm gonna play it in its whole entire entirety. And then um, the song Houston Blues it integrates some um, sort of breaking chords down into finger picking patterns. It utilizes, you know, um, a thumping bass line, it utilizes a walking bass line woven into the chord progression, and then a lot of Alan Haynes's electric um, blues guitar licks he has in the original recording. I kind of took those original licks and rearranged it for acoustic guitar. And I think there's drawing in there. There's definitely double stops in the solos and chords in the solos. So for this last thing, I'm gonna play Houston Blues by Alan Haynes, which demonstrates all the concepts that I taught in this lesson so far. And then it's gonna be sort of tricky because I have to sing and play guitar at the same time. But when I'm using the, the um, like one of those concepts that I just taught in this lesson, like I'm gonna sort of shout it out. It's like, hey, I'm doing a walking bass line right now. Hey, I'm doing a chord pattern right now. Hey, I'm using devil stops in the solo right now. I'm gonna try to, to do my best to point out when I'm using, like um, demonstrating a concept that I just taught in this lesson during um, the song, to sort of like point it out to see. Um, Cause I introduced a lot of individual ideas, but now we're taking all those ideas and putting it into a package, into a single song, and it's going to be kind of tricky because I still have to sing. Uh, so do playing of the guitar, singing, and then verbally pointing out when I'm um, using those concepts. So I'll, I'll give it a try. It might be a train wreck, but... This is the Houston Blues by Alan Haynes. Chords. Walking bass line. Chords. Walking bass line. Chords. Turn around. Born in Houston. Where the blues fall down like rain. Court. Down Houston, y'all. Walking bass line. Where the blues fall down like rain. Court solo. Lightning and Hopkins on down lane. Have a Collins up on me. Turn around. First court solo. Quartal solo. Individual note solo. Double stops.
born in Houston. With the blues fall down like rain. Down Houston, y'all. With the blues fall down like rain. Lightning Hopkins on Dowling. Albert Collins of Bundy. Outro Soul. Solo. Right, that's how um, that's an example of a song just played when you use um, everything that I taught in this past hour and then package it into a song. I think I used almost um, everything I taught into that lesson into that song, my arrangement of Houston Blues. And that's all I have um, to offer um, for today. Um, I'm gonna hang out for like 20 or 30, uh, 10 or 30 more seconds to see if um, anyone. Um, wants to write a comment or they have a question they want me to go over something again or like um maybe maybe like this is too advanced you, maybe you want me to take um this one of the many lessons in this lesson and to like break it down into a one hour lesson or maybe this is really easy maybe um like um you know like everything i taught so far and you want um a future lesson on another on something else so I'll just stick around for like, I guess, like 20 or 30 more seconds to see if anyone wants to type in something. So. Oh, yeah. One thing I forgot to talk about um, in this lesson is everything that I played so far is this is an important concept I forgot to talk about, but everything that I played so far in this lesson is in the key of B. And then E is a really guitar friendly um, key because you have an E right here and E right here, so you can do a lot of this open note drawings thing. But if you're at the Archie Edwards jam, and then if you learn all this like cool stuff in like E, but you want to transpose it in another um, key, you have this thing here called a capo. So if we're at the barbershop jam and then they say, hey, I want to play a song in the key of G. So take this capo right here, clamp it right here. This, in case you don't know, this capo, it represents this, this nut right here. So you can then play all that cool stuff that you're doing in the key of, um, in the first um, position E chord. You can just put a capo right here. And now I can do all the stuff I, I learned, but in the key of G. Stuff. So yeah, that's something I forgot to talk about, but um, use a capo to transpose chords. So I'll stick around for a little longer to see if anyone wants to type in a question. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in this afternoon. I hope you have a great weekend. And let me know what you thought about this les lesson, if you enjoyed it, or maybe if my speaking voice is too monotone, or maybe if it feels way over your head. But um, I'd like to know if this um, lesson here really um, helped um, uh, improve your playing. And then, um, you know, um, I I'd like to know, like, if, like, you're able to take what I taught today and, like, implement it in your um own lesson let me know i'd love to see like you like a, up, upload um a video of maybe some uh like finger picking patterns that you came up yourself but using those same ideas or concepts or whatnot so like give me feedback let me know if um, this is helpful if this helped your playing and stay safe and have a great weekend <laughs>